All right, a new set and a couple new stamps, individual stamps, um, impression test video here. All right, so we have our nature set number 31 here. And it is the first desert kind of um, centric uh, flora type of set. We do have a couple new rocks in here and uh, a couple of the fauna with the um, little cactus wren, a scorpion, roadrunner, and um, horny lizard. I want to. I still want to say horny toad because that's what we grew up calling them. But anyways, uh, before I forget to say. These little um, creatures here, those are the types of things that get easily lost, okay? So make sure you, that you keep these little dinky stamps somewhere safe where you can, uh, you know, where, where you're not gonna kind of misplace them. Okay, so let's test out some impression uh, quality with them. And this is where I see if, uh, you know, the, uh, the engraving process and mold making process, um, did what it was supposed to do in retaining as much detail as we could possibly retain. I'm gonna try this on some glossy cardstock here and uh, see how that goes. And you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I can pretty much look at the, look at a piece of rubber and tell if it's, um, you know, really super detailed and uh, you know, I I have a pretty good idea of how it's going to print out just by looking at it. Okay, so this is the Joshua Tree. Image really close to my heart. Uh, there's a, Joshua Trees all over um, uh, Southwest California. And um, I've spent a lot of time in Joshua Tree National Park. Okay, now the first impressions are never really the best, you know, when you're using brand new stamps because there's a resist that's on the rubber here a little bit, okay? So I'm going to go for my second impression here. That one pr printed out pretty good, but um, I can see there was a little bit of beading of the ink. This is a water-based dye ink on the rubber here. So I can see right around in here, there was a little bit of a, I don't know what they call it, fish eye or something like that with that. But I can look at the details in here and that's exactly what I wanted as far as impression quality. These are the cling foam stamps right here. Okay, checking it out again right here. And going for a third, and let's see how this one goes. You can see there's a little bit of that um, mold. They they have this thing that they spray onto the uh, the mold so that it releases from the um, you know the rubber releases after the uh, after the vulcanizing process. So let's go with this one one more time. And here, this is the larger Joshua tree. Then there's a medium and a small. And perfect. You see that with the third impression right there. So this one right here, it was a little bit light around here. The second one, a little bit light. You can see that little resist right in there in that solid area right there. And by the third impression, it's perfectly fine. Now you, you can just avoid all that. You can take your stamps like this and you can, you know, put a little bit of um, water on a paper towel or something like that and just kind of scrub them, up, you know, down a little. And you don't have to do it too much, but you just kind of rub them like that a little bit and it'll get a, a little bit of that residual um, uh, mold release off of the uh, off your rubber. I usually just stamp my stuff out though because I want to see um, the impressions anyway. Okay, all right, so we got a nice strong silhouette there. Sometimes what I do too is after I stamp them and I kind of give them a little bit of a rub like that too. It gets the it gets the uh, the ink off of it, but it also kind of 
Yeah, it kind of buffs it a little bit too, you know, especially with a brand new stamp. All right, so I should say this is the, uh, if you can tell, this one's the cling foam version set right here. Let's go with this uh, Joshua tree, the medium sized one. I'm going to do this right here too. I'm going to take it and rub it with my hand a little bit like that. That usually takes off a lot of that um, mold release on there. And there, there's not a, usually a lot on mine. My rubber guy, you know, he knows how much he should use. You know, he's, he's, he's done, you know, I don't know, tens of thousands of, uh, of uh, you know, sheets of rubber before. So he's got all that down to a science. Okay, let's see here. Here's the medium size one right here. All right, that looks perfectly well. The thing I'm looking for is uh, the details right around on the tops of the, uh, the uh, cactus. Is it, I don't know, is it, it's, like, it's like yucca. Okay, now that one right there worked perfectly fine. I think it's because I just took it and rubbed it a little bit with my hand and buffed it out. This is a really full set right here. <laughs> There's hardly any room on the plate. Okay, just rubbing this off a little bit like that. And also, too, sometimes when they're trimming this out of the uh, the cling foam, a little bit of that adhesive. If you've ever trimmed um, cling foam yourself, you know how sticky that is. But sometimes a little residual amount of it gets on top of your rubber. And then when you try to stamp it out, there'll be a little bit of a spot. Okay. And it could be a little bit of that adhesive gut on there. So just kind of buff it out a little bit and clean it, you know, and wipe that off. It's a little bit of the adhesive. It's not even just the uh, a little bit of the foam. I try to look for that and, you know, get that off before I can, uh, before I send them out. But I don't always get like, I don't know, a little bit of a tiny, you know, less than a centimeter, you know, um, little stain or something like that but like i said it just you can just kind of buff it out with your finger or something of that sort okay that's the joshua tree small so you can see how these kind of work in what is it concert with each other so if you stamp them a little bit higher i mean if you stamp this one lower it would represent something that's a lot closer to us but it's just a smaller you know joshua tree i wouldn't call it a sapling or anything like that but um oh uh, just a uh, you know a younger uh, version. Okay, let's get into the second uh, main image. This is the or uh, uh, organ pipe cactus. And I really like the shape of these ones. Where I go, um, where I used to go camping and hiking, um, you know, mainly in the California high deserts, um, Joshua Tree, Death Valley, uh, Mojave National Preserve. Um, you, you didn't get this one, but I sure would have liked uh, to see that one or like to see one of these one day. I think they're out probably in maybe Utah, Arizona. I don't know if any are in New Mexico. Okay, there's a little bit of that uh, resistance right there. Right there, but I'll just, you know, get a couple of impressions going with this and we'll get that... Uh, off that way or it might have just you know just the act of inking this up might have removed it but we could get a little bit of an issue right here with those first impressions okay do that kind of resist it's really more apparent on larger designs that have a lot of surface area you know where if there is any kind of irregularity with the uh um surface um you know it would it would show. So these ones are fairly silhouette based. Um, I imagine these scenes are, yeah, I made them pretty bold, you know, because I imagine these in front of um, like sunrises or sunsets, really dramatic types of scenes or against a nighttime type of sky. So I did them pretty silhouette based. Okay, yeah, no problem, okay. So I just held that down a little bit longer, but that is a perfectly 
deep impression. And I have a little bit of um, the lighting. Uh, I don't know if you can see that right within uh, the forms there. So on that one, I just, I don't know, I built, built up a little bit more um, ink before stamping them out. Now I'm stamping this on two different things. That's not indicative of how you have to use it. You can use these, you know, all the cacti, you know, it's usually kind of an ecosystem. So you have several um, different varieties all in the same area. So some of that uh, people that were asking me to do these um, have other suggestions as far as additional flora. I said, well, let's see how this batch does first. <laughs> but I don't know, I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with these myself, so. Look for, you know, a decent number of uh, videos to come out using them. Okay. See this, I can see it's kind of building up and it's kind of beating on the surface, you know, initially like this because it's kind of resisting my water-based ink. But for me, um, with this ink right here, if I just kind of keep tapping it in here, it's not tapping it in there stronger. It's just kind of beating it up. So you don't want to press into your pad too strongly. Otherwise, it's kind of removing the ink because it's kind of squeegeeing, you know, um, vacuuming the uh, ink off of there. Okay, second organ pipe or pipe organ, organ pipe cacti. Cactus. Okay, now this one's lighter, okay? And that's to represent more of a, a an illuminated version. You can use them together, you know, there's, there's objects in shadow and uh, in light, depending on clouds and lighting hitting it, etc. And the smallest one right here, okay. Use less pressure on your smaller objects so you're not squishing it down. Okay. Nice and solid too. Small, medium, large. All right, now these rocks here. These rocks are not rocks. There's not really, I don't know. I, I guess if there was a geologist or something like that, they can say, hey, you know, that there's these rocks look different in different areas. But for the most part, you know, you can use just generic rocks anywhere now if there were rocks that had like a palm tree in the back of them or something like that naturally those are going to be more specific to a given uh, location type of area but when it's just rocks alone you can use them wherever you want but i thought they would go really nicely with this i happen to be working on this um grouping here anyway and I thought I'm going to add them to the uh, the desert terrain. And I thought that would make a really great pairing. So these ones are fairly large right here. And that looks exactly like the original. I love it. Okay, so I'm looking at all those little details in there. So they really got this... Um, engraving done really nicely. Uh, my engraver always does, but um, I don't know. It's it's like an art too, it just, as much as a science. So when they're doing this, because they have to, whoever's burning the plate, and I doubt if it's all automatic at this point in time, but just depending on the amount of um, detail in a given area, they have to kind of watch for, although you do ask for a certain depth of a plate um, or burn into the, uh, the magnesium plate, they do have to take into consideration how much detail is in there. The more detail there is, probably the longer time that they have to let it etch. But you can't let it etch too long, otherwise it starts removing um, some detail too probably starts etching away the detail. 
And by what, you know, itching is a, it's like a acid um, process. And there's your smaller version of it like that. Look how great those um, rocks look in there. So this is just, of course, you know, just a, you know, fooling around right here on this one. But look at that. So you can just have all those trees and just, you can snap your rocks after the fact and they look like they're behind the, um, in this case, the Joshua trees. Let me do this one right here. Impression quality video, but I'd, I want to see some of this right here. Just to give myself a, an idea of how it can look in a, in a composition. I can never have too many rocks. You know, I'm always love the addition of uh, additional rocks and rock structures, rock clusters. Yeah, let me see. All right, I think that one's going to be one of my favorites. Rocks are one of those things that they have to look really accurate to me. Um, to use them um, when rocks just aren't rendered properly it always stands out to me because there, there's a certain kind of characteristic to them and grace um, that they should have as well as kind of strength and weight um, so that's something that I always look for in, uh, in designs okay so <laughs> All the main imagery stamping out exactly like I had hoped for. Now let's test out some of these little creatures right here. So what these ones, believe it or not, you know, they could be the most um, the most delicate, I guess, to use. Okay, so when I was, you know, when I was saying before, you use a certain amount of pressure when you're making your impressions. Well, when you get down to kind of a small image like that, see, I purposely kind of stamped that one, squashed it. So here I am squashing it right there. Do you see how that's kind of blurred out a little bit? So just light, even pressure like that. And you get some good detail in there. And um, impression quality, you can see like down here on the extremities right here, if you press too hard, um, you don't want that. And also, you know, the thicker the ink is, you know, it could, you know, get, give you a different um, impression. So just whatever you do, just light, even pressure, where you're just kind of touching it down and giving it adequate amount of pressure. And that should be, uh, you know, it, it'll give you a good um, impression. Remember what I said about uh, watch out for these small images. Okay, don't lose them. All right. One time someone ordered a, a full sheet and then they couldn't find what, you know, the smallest stamp, you know, after they started using it. It wasn't the cling foam sets. It was the uh, unmatted sheet. And they just, just said, hey, you know, it, uh, mine never came with that uh, creature or something like that. But, you know, when you get a blank sheet, it's everything's on there. It, you know, it can't, you know, it something like that can't be just, you know, came out of the mold and it was missing one stamp. Everything has to be in there. So, but it was a small one. So, um, and, and they later found it too, but it's, it's easy to kind of misplace. Okay. I'm going to try to put this little cactus ran up on top of the uh, Joshua tree here. Yeah. See, there's their little, uh, cactus wren. I think I, let me see right here. My uh, block here is really dirty. I need to um, clean it off a little bit. But there you go. It's not a kind of fun. It's like a fine Waldo type of thing, you know, in these uh, desert turns. Like, um, find, you know, uh, a 
reptile in this saying here's the scorpion i see if i had this set um when my uh son was a uh, little i would have i would have hid uh you know or i would have stamped out a scene like this and had like these birds um and say okay find four birds or something like that find um a scorpion or find a, a reptile okay let me test that out that thing looks amazing okay that thing has a surprisingly decent amount of uh detail and it's oh sorry it's right on the back there's a little bit of a light lighter area okay but again you know with small stamps don't squash it down like this and like stamping it as hard as i did the joshua trees which are so much bigger actually doesn't that look too bad <laughs> it does look a little bit more squashed though okay okay so that tarantula stamped out amazing now this one's getting really really dinky here okay but i wanted to stamp it in scale kind of I don't know. It would be a little bit, I don't know, eh, about the same size or a little bit larger than the scorpion, but I didn't want to have too big of a horned lizard here. So this one right here, make sure that you don't, you know, stamp it out too strong. Okay. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I can't, I can't get him on top of that rock right there. My tack and peel is too cloudy i need to wash it off here we'll get it stamped out right here and there's our little guy right there now there's not a lot of detail in him there's a little detail in his bag and hopefully it if you know what a horned toad you know a horned lizard looks like you'll see his little spiky kind of collar on him and anyway Okay, so that looks pretty good. That's set there, okay, in terms of uh, impression quality and the amount of detail um, uh, translated detail, I should say, from originals to um, impression. Okay, so from the originals, they make um, a negative out of it and then there's a negative and then they print it onto a piece of magnesium okay a positive and that positive is in this acid bath and it eats away all the area around that acid impression so if this was sitting on the plate it's eaten away all that side area so you get a raised magnesium um, etching or plate and then they press that into a mold they heat up this mold and it magnesium presses down in there and that leaves this recessed area which is the mold to press the rubber from and then they put in these rubber sheets on there and that gets squished down into that it's you know it's flat like this i'm just showing you on the side it gets squished down into that and they pull out that rubber sheet from that you know after you know they open it up take that out remove the uh the rubber out of the uh the mold or matrix board and then you have your rubber you know and then from that rubber we have to make another impression from it so it's like so we have the negative the plate the mold the rubber and the impression so that's five generations away from the original design drawing so that's quite a bit you know five generations that's pretty far but everything translated really well i'm just okay so i i have a couple of these uh pieces of um vintage paper here's some uh wood grain paper i'm just kind of curious i'd like to see uh, a couple of these impressions just on uh you know some cool paper right here i really can't wait to see these in front of a uh, you know, beautiful red, you know, burgundy sunset or um, twilight or something like that. Oh, here, what I was going to do, 
making that up with this. Let's sync it up with uh, a little bit of a, even that came out pretty good. Let's sync it up with the, uh, the hybrid ink. It's a little bit thicker for this uh, type of pre-printed paper. It's kind of in between, um, well, it's in between because it's half, or I don't know what form, what, what ratio, but it's, it's part pigment ink and part dye ink, so it's a pretty good combination. But let's add, let's do a little scene here, a quick one. I'm holding this down now too a little bit longer because this is pre-printed paper that I'm stamping on, so it's not absorbent like it would be with, um, you know, just a piece of blank cardstock. Okay, so hold it down for a little bit longer, like that. Okay, and let me let me try to fit in a couple of uh, different types of uh, cacti in here. little bit of a smaller card right here. I can put, you know, I'm gonna to try to fit in a bunch of things in here, so I'm not gonna stamp out my, uh, the larger rocks in this piece, I don't think. If you ever make it out to the desert, the deserts aren't all like the Sahara Desert or something like that. You don't get too many of those kind of sandy, just dune types of areas in uh, deserts. And if you do, they're just in like one kind of small area. But that's what, what a lot of people think about when they think of desert, they're thinking of, uh, you know, some kind of like a Sahara type of thing. You know, when you talk about like Death Valley or something like that. And I'm just masking off some of these um, rocks in here, if I'm stamping it out behind the rocks. But deserts in the uh, springtime are really uh, amazing. Uh, when the cacti are in bloom, there's so many amazing colors out there. Uh, some of the brightest of all flowers. Okay, let's see. <laughs> this bird doesn't really fit down here. I'm just kind of squeezing it be in between a couple of these rocks right in here. Kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of, uh, you know, this in like a sunsetty type of situation. Um, now, I, you know, I would use other stamps, you know, within my Stampscapes line with this, you know, some here. Let me get some little tiny rocks in here. Uh, but the deserts in spring after some decent rains are really amazing because you get all the annuals um, blooming and... Um, but like I said, I, I like the cacti, which usually bloom later than the annuals, so um, yeah, check it out either, either way. Or if you can't make it out there, you can always check it out online. Check out some different uh, photos to give you some ideas. You can put all kinds of like flowers around in this area right in here. 
Okay, I'm just adding in a little bit of shadow here. I wasn't going to do any kind of little scene, but um, just kind of stamping these out right here really kind of inspires me to just check out a, you know, real quick scenario here, just out of my own curiosity to see what it looks like. Okay, just adding a little bit of a, you know, then you can have a, you know, your mesas or something in the background. I have this um, design, this um, mountain range that's real kind of, I don't know, could be desert. Um, that was released earlier this year. That can go right in back in here. Or you can just have this like a little vista, you know, horizon down here. You can put a moon up here or something like that. But real atmospheric, okay, that, I feel like this is kind of like transportive, you know, with, you know, areas that I've been to. I often go hiking and I'd be getting back at, um, kind of going back to the car and it's after the sun's gone down. That's why you're always out there. You better remember where the car is. <laughs> okay, so, all right, my tack and peel is not very sticky so hopefully this sticks to it i haven't been putting my uh tack and peel i mean my uh plastic sheet back on after usage because i'm usually doing other things but i need to wash off my tack and peel so these are the unmounted um rubber pieces right here and this is the new shore right here well, let's take a look at this one um, let's see, let me just go ahead and use this black right here. My black dye basting is getting a little bit dry. And this one right here, I, I mean, I can tell it's exactly what I want that rubber to look like when there's a lot of super tight detail in an image with a lot of solids and, as well as, um, you know, tonal additions in there, like small dots and lines or whatnot, or both. Okay. Now this one's not, this one doesn't have a huge amount of solid, so uh, I think it should print out pretty good the first time. And it does right there. Okay. A little bit lighter in some of these areas right in here but again that's my very first impression on bare rubber see right there so just kind of give it a little bit of a buff and i just do that on a piece of paper like that and that should be really fantastic get the first impression look just fine too anyway like that okay so anyways on this one right here now this could be desert too it could be a desert wash right down in here or something like this but this could be the ocean right here and you can put water and this could be a little bluff right here you can do it with grass if you want to it could just be sand or dirt or something like that you can put a horizon out here with an ocean or you can plant just different trees up here but this craggy type of area right here really gives a really strong um, kind of textural lead-in for your foreground elements or your foreground can be down here and this could represent more of a distant background with smaller trees in the background like that so let's test this out right here yeah just as I'm saying that I'm thinking about all these kind of desert washes that I used to uh, you know go walking in hiking in or camping around Um, very seldom did they have any, uh, um, water in them. Cause you don't go, you don't go hiking out, you know, in, uh, desert areas if there's a chance of rain, you know, due to flash flooding. But if the rains have passed and, uh, you go hiking, you know, in the next, uh, day or two or whatever, it's just, it's an incredible treat watching, um, seeing water out in those um, desert areas. Or just areas that you, you know, you're just not 
accustomed to seeing it. Yeah, look at that right there. And again, this isn't just, you know, I didn't release this, sh you know, the shore right here because of the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the set, the cactus set, you know, I'm just using it right here because they're out. <laughs> so. Fine Waldo, that's the name of my scorpion. <laughs> Just joking. Oh, okay, here's another small design. I always leave my tiny rock small on this smallest of uh, little blocks because I use it all the time, but here's our last design right here, the couple with the dog. Now, a desert area like this, I wouldn't go walking uh, like a dog with a dog out in those areas. But if you live out there, I mean, there's a little trail. <laughs> no, that cacti, you know, it's a little bit too big for them. I just wanted to test it out right there. Some Joshua trees get really big, though. I don't know about yeah, the Oregon pipe, very not that big. Yeah, look at that. And awesome detail, that little leash right there translated just right. And I can see the area in between that guy's um, arm and his shoulder right there. So it um, reads just fine. So anyways, uh, Barker Dam Trail, Joshua Tree National Park, 2007. <laughs> All right. So anyways, I got to watch out for this one, but especially these little designs on this set. Don't lose those ones. Okay. Um, make sure that you have those nicely, uh, stored, nicely stored in some convenient area where they're not going to get lost. All right, so anyways, impression uh, tests right here with the new imagery. Thanks to everyone who placed an order and uh, I'll be shipping these, starting to ship these out tomorrow uh, to everyone that pre-ordered and uh, whatnot. And uh, yeah, like I said, uh, when you get your new stamps, you know, just take a look at them. I mean, you can just go ahead and use them too, you know, if you don't mind. Oh, you know, here's a tiny little bit that didn't, you know, stamp out or something like that. You know, it's it's like third impression, you know, usually. Uh, for me, that works the best. Or like I said, if you just kind of, you know, give it a little buff, you know, you can get a, you know, a little little slightly moist paper towel and just kind of buff it out. You'll get a little, you know, shreds of paper towel over it or something like that. But that usually cleans them off really well too. 
and they should be right ready to go. Um, hope you enjoy them. Can't wait to use these. I, I really just, you know, even just stamping these little things out like this, like this one right here, you know, was you know, just a test thing and just stamping those things in the background on those rocks. And this almost looks like a complete scene right now. Um, ready for coloring or something like that. You can use Brayer right over the top of this if you wanted to. Um, with like a rainbow type of transition in right in here and do some of their colors down here. And that'd make for a really quick scene. Photo stamping should be amazing with these right here. So, so if you have any photographs of sunsets or something like that, um, print them out on your uh, inkjet printer and uh, use your dye based inks right over the top of it. And uh, that should print onto those types of uh, uh, photo prints just uh, well. Um, glossy, I mean, uh, holographic um, sticker paper should be kind of interesting too. I plan on doing some nighttime skies with these images. I, I plan on using them in all kinds of different ways and I, I just really can't wait, so. Hope you enjoy them. Can't wait to see what all you all do with them. And uh, thanks again for your support throughout the entire year, but uh, also for these uh, latest uh, images.